So hi, everybody. We're just getting some technical stuff done on the webinar to make sure that we are good to go. We've got that one going, which is brilliant. And I'll just do the chat. Uh, making sure everybody can chat to everybody. So I, I should have good sound as I should have a chat function that is working quite well as well. Uh, now in saying that, can I get a quick little sound check guys we've got people uh logging in we're going to do a sound check uh all good g'day jeff how are you fantastic so we're all good sound wise all good camera wise so we should be good sound wise camera wise fantastic so remy you're you're here right that's uh man, that is absolutely brilliant let me just stretch this chat out on a little bit to make sure we uh guys we it looks like we're pretty good to go all right so fantastic no it's fantastic now I'm going to guys today we're going to be talking guys because this is this is webinar four, webinar number four. So I do want to say, uh, guys, like I do all the time, a big thank you to uh, the Trading Pit guys for having us in the webinar series. Uh, we've got some really good feedback. I was on the first three webinars. What we are going to be doing tonight is building on the first three webinars uh, by talking about our next really really key guys, really really key subject, which is uh, reversal patterns. Now, as it turns out, I've just put up the YouTube short video congratulating the traders both out of the live trading room again today for another textbook NASDAQ, uh, tech, well, I should say textbook NASDAQ trading session in saying that it was an absolute masterclass. Um, Yusuf, how are you? It was a masterclass guys, today in reversal trading. Ironically, that's what we're going to be doing today is when we, uh, when we go through our theory. So the beauty, guys, the beauty of... Um, Again, the beauty of presenting off a live chart, and um, I'll grab that live chart. Where did my little live chart go? I, here it is here. Now, guys, the beauty of presenting off a live chart, so there's the live chart right now, and a big shout out, guys, a big shout out to Daniel. Uh, Daniel took an absolutely stunning trade, guys, today. I'm gonna be presenting, guys, as I always do. Mark, how are you? Um, I hope you're amazing. We are presenting, guys, tonight, as I always do, I was always presenting off a live chart because typically in this kind of session, we are actually going to pick up, you know, a trade, which is really, really, really good fun. But today, guys, on the NASDAQ, we basically picked up four reversals. Um, they were all brilliant. They all paid. Now, in saying that, I put a little bit of a smart-ass comment on Facebook today saying, oh, once again, we got a 100% strike rate, four from, four from four. Suzanne, how are you? Hope you're brilliant. Uh, the reason I put these little comments out there, uh, that, like, like that particular one, um, I do that on purpose because there's a lot of people out there in the trading game that say, well, you know what, you can make money quite well if you're getting it right 60% of the time or 70% of the time. And, and that's true. Look, you can, guys, if you're using absolutely massive targets, but on a day like today, when the market is really, really constrained, you can't use massive targets. You've got to use smaller volatile um, or volatility defined targets. So today, guys, we did run once again at 100% strike rate on the NASDAQ using the strategies that we've done in the first three webinars. Guys, and the strategies we're going to build on over the next uh, six webinars, including today. Now, guys, as we always do, uh, as we always do, the, the, beautiful thing, uh, the beautiful thing about what we're going to be doing tonight is, is I would love to find out where you are from. <laughs> so Keith has already jumped the gun. So Keith is from Northern. Keith is in, 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 in blah, 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 I should say Keith is in northern in wa i'm just going to move the chat function up guys i'm currently uh, i'm in japan so we've got people in uh we've got people in japan we've obviously got people in portugal uh in the uk so we've got bali bali we've got papua new guinea gold coast although this is truly guys this is truly international tonight isn't it so we've got We've got Melbourne, Bali, Bali. Uh, we've got the UK. We've got Portugal. We've, we've Newcastle, <laughs> Newcastle, Australia. Um, Granite Belt. Okay, well done. Scenic Rim. Are you Lee? How are you? I hope you're brilliant. And Germany as well. Okay, hello Germany. Guys, you know what? You know it's really exciting. Is I've become an expert in trading the German stock market. Okay, so I'm really, really good at trading the FTAX, and we trade the Nasdaq, of, of course, and the S&P 500. I've never it, since I since I mastered trading the German stock market, I've never actually been to Germany. Okay, so I think that's a really good point. I don't think it matters where you are in the world because if you want to be really good on the European Open, Ali from the Gold Coast, fantastic. You want to be really, really good on European Open, guys. You trade the markets that move the best in that time slot. Um, Ali, <laughs> you someone was going to pick that up. 
I said, thank you. I appreciate that. So, Luca, you're from the Netherlands. Wow. So we've gone way over. Like last webinar, guys, I think we sat at six countries. We're way over six countries today, which is which is really quite exciting. I right, said, so now that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip that chat function. I'll flip that chat off of another screen. Guys, right, what I'm gonna do is get on with our slides. I do want to get our webinar done today. Um, I do want to get our webinar done, guys, inside around about 60 minutes. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put your chat function over there so, it, so it's easy for me to read at a distance. Now, guys, this is uh, webinar number four. So for those of you that have just joined us in the series, there are three webinars before this that talk about the importance of stair-stepping in the market. Also, a huge one, guys, a huge one is candlestick analysis. So how do we actually analyze the markets in order to enter and so on and so forth? Strongly recommend, guys, if you haven't seen parts one, two, or three, they are currently on the Trading Pit YouTube channel. So please do go and watch them. It's a beautiful little sort of sequence of um, beautiful little sequence of. Um, oh, we've got a video on there. Who's turned their video on? <laughs> Hang on a sec, mate. Hang on. I've got uh, where the international teaching. Keith, thank you. I appreciate that. So, guys, we will. So it looks like you can turn your videos. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good way with that. Um, now, guys, that being said, uh, that being said, uh, the the first the first three uh, webinars, guys, we, we're running the sequence of nine. It's all designed to basically give you a really really good foundation. I can use of the mills with how to trade the markets really really well. Now, the key with trading the markets really really well, guys, is that we want to make sure that in our part four webinar that we want to understand how to use the rule of three. So, really really quite important how to use the rule of three, how to mark the stair step in the market with the intent of hunting high probability trades. Now, the way we do that, most the way we do that, uh, the way we hunt super high probability trades is that we are looking for the components of candlestick analysis. We're looking at stair step guys, and today we picked up four reversals from four trades and we picked them up simply because we understand the content in those first three webinars. All right, so let me build that on a little bit, a little bit further on that today. All right, so in terms of reversal trades, as effectively the reversal trades are going to be the first trades that actually turn the market very, very effectively. Now, what does that mean? So a reversal trade will typically offer not only significant potential profit, but also limited risk. Right? So we can actually be quite fast with our risk control. Reversal trades are really, really good fun for particularly junior traders or those people that haven't done what we do before. I said they're very, very easy to pick in the market. And ultimately you can go for quite a large profit target and when compared to your risk. So sometimes guys, that we've been for today, guys, Daniel took an amazing trade. Ahmed's just turning his camera on. So guys, it looks like we've got a bit of a link crossover. So for those of you that can turn your cameras on, you, you realize you are gonna be televising to seven different countries, Ahmed. So, so, so you could choose uh, you could choose uh, how many countries you want to go to. So, guys, back to the webinar. Reversal trades are the first, uh, effectively, the first ones that turn the market. They're the ones that offer the greatest potential with very, very small risk. As the most important thing is, the highest probability reversal trades will always be traded off a closed candle. So, we're going to be talking about the difference between an open candle and also a closed candle. And finally, guys and girls, the best reversal trades will be off support and resistance levels. Now, they will typically be pivots and Fibonacci. Now, we got reversal trades today off both pivots and Fibonacci's. So that went very, very well as, and ultimately resulted in four winning trades. And again, a big shout out to Daniel, guys, for taking an absolutely enormous trade that I'll take you through when we have a look at the live charts. Now, my target, guys, my target for tonight, uh, I want to finish in 60 minutes. I want to keep us as close to 60 minutes as we possibly can. I do want to spend most of the time in the live charts. But what I also want to do uh, is, is explain the mechanics behind reversing the market. So we'll do the theory behind what we're doing, and then we'll go into the practical side and show you that if you apply what I teach you today in the charts, so, so literally if this webinar was yesterday, you could have applied exactly the theory we're doing today. Yesterday, you could have applied that today and had four winning trades in a row. Okay, so the whole intent, guys, the whole intent behind anything I present, it's always done on live charts, guys. And I do believe live charts are exciting. Anybody can go back six or seven or eight weeks and find a really, really sexy looking trade. Guys, but I tend to go back to the live charts from tonight and, and make sure it's 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 really legitimate, guys, and and, and very, very good. 
Now, because we are running across multiple jurisdictions, as most important thing, we want to make sure that if we acknowledge the fact that we're trading futures or CFDs, guys, there is risk. There's primarily two risks in trading. There's a risk of making money and losing money. Now, of course, we want to be on the side of making money every time we take a trade. So therefore, we're ultimately professional risk controllers. That's all we do is control risk, which is kind of good fun because it's really, not only is it simple in principle, but it's also very, very easy to do. Now, the flip side of that, guys, because we are trading either a future or a CFD, as we are trading on margin, that means we borrow money every time we take a trade. What does that mean? Our wins can be really big, very impressive. So can our losses. So once again, we're focused on only taking super high probability trades that have a really, really good risk to reward ratio, guys. And, and that's what we did today. In saying that, guys, everything we do in the presentation tonight is general information only. The past performance of any financial products, guys, we, we're no longer allowed to use it as an indication of future performance. Many, many years ago, guys, when I started about 15 years ago, we were actually allowed to, um, but now we're not allowed to. And that's just the way it goes. Now, for those of you that don't know who I am, very, very quick introduction. Um, everybody calls me Lockie, guys. I'm the CTO or, or, or Chief Trading Officer at Doro out of Singapore. I now the beauty of being out of Singapore as we get to do a lot of really exciting stuff like use wonderful companies like the trading pit guys to get people funded so what we're doing at the moment guys we've got a basically an 18 month project which is we put people through an education process which is going very very well as we then put them into the live trading room for the european open we teach them how to trade we get them funded and then we basically keep on calling trades for them day after day after day after day until they do really really well as a professional trader now that's the goal now, um, for those of you that haven't seen me present before, um, please note that I'm a very, very direct speaker. That means I come from a military background. So I spent 15 years in the military. I transitioned out of the army to be a full-time professional trader. As I was trained by Macquarie Bank in Sydney on how to read the markets very, very well, and then decided I'm gonna go and do it for myself. That was one of the things I did discover at Macquarie Bank, as there's a very, very big difference between futures trading, which is what I do, and all other forms of trading because ultimately as a futures trader, I don't use a broker, okay? So that means that as a futures trader, my trading is not only very, very accurate, but I can also call trades in the live trading room of an afternoon. I can tell people exactly where to get into the market. And, and guys, we, we had a lot of fun again today, which is, which is kind of brilliant. Uh, I have had the opportunity, guys and girls, to speak internationally on trading. I've written books. Uh, I've written an international bestseller. Uh, suffice to say, uh, I love trading. <laughs> so some of you will joke guys because i actually have a facebook page called i love trading fancy that now in saying that uh, guys trading's been very very kind to me there's no question about that and one of the ways that i can give back to everyone globally is by by teaching you how and what to do and when to do it so you can also do really really well out of trading so my my history guys post army so post the military first of august 2007 i discovered futures trading i was a forex trader at that point in time i changed to futures immediately I was 1st of August, I launched my first trading room, February 2010, I launched the candlestick analysis um, principles that we were talking about in the previous webinars. Uh, mid 2010, as I launched the efficiency and delta indicators that again, I uh, will be talking a little bit about efficiency tonight, the delta, we won't be talking about that tonight, that'll be in the advanced webinars in around three to four weeks time. I was 2011, I started speaking internationally, had an opportunity to speak all over the world, which has been really exciting. At the moment, there's more than two and a half thousand traders that have access to um, my education, guys, called the 101 course. Uh, and Doro uh, will be releasing the latest version of the 101 course, guys, in July, which is brilliant. 2013, I got to work with Donald Trump, guys. Um, suffice to say, he's actually quite a nice person. Um, <laughs> I get in a lot of trouble for saying that because there'll be people out there that don't don't agree. But my point being is he's actually quite a nice guy. He's actually quite a nice guy, um, despite what he said in the press. Uh, and finally, guys, end of 2023, I actually moved to Japan. Very awesome story. I, was, I, I basically had one of the biggest futures trading schools in Southeast Asia in Australia. Um, decided after 10 years that I was going to pack up and move overseas, which I've now done. Uh, as I uh, got invited to join Doro Day Trading out of Singapore, and may I suggest, guys, compliments to Doro. They are an absolutely lovely team. They are very supportive. They let me get a little bit crazy at times, uh, and I really like that, guys. So my, my focus is solely trading now uh, and, and teaching you how to do it, which is what we're going to be doing tonight. 
Now, a very, very quick review of what we are going to be doing as reversal trades in context with the European Open from today. I'm going to run through the theory of why you reverse the market and how you reverse the market. And then I'm going to show you the signals in the live charts and we'll talk about how to control your risk and similar things. Our target market will be the NASDAQ. As we're going to go for beginner traders in this series. So today we'll go beginner and then I'll start to mention the intermediate stuff. So, so even for those people that are traded before, you're going to walk away from the webinar with some pretty cool information. And guys, the target learning, the target learning ultimately from everything we're going to do, particularly in the live charts, will be why did we take these trades? Okay, so I want you to walk away from the webinar tonight understanding I know exactly why Lachlan took that particular trade. I could have made $200 or $300 or 400 US dollars uh, naturally in a, in a, on a live chart, which, which I think is kind of brilliant. So very, very quick history. Those reversal trades have always been a fascination for me as they were the first trade I was ever taught. So I go, so my trading teacher was a gentleman called Richard Malcolm based out of the US. Now he taught me a strategy. Now, please don't write this down because you won't need it. He taught me a strategy called negative histogram divergence. Now, so it's actually nicknamed NHD. We don't need to go through NHD tonight, guys, because it doesn't actually apply to a five minute chart, which is what we're going to be doing tonight. It actually applies to tick charts. But either way, negative histogram divergence was the first signal I was actually taught. It's a reversal signal or what we call a market fatigue signal. And basically everything I've done in, in, in terms of reversal patterns has developed from there. So the reversal trades, as a couple of little sort of teaching points as we roll through. Reversal trades are always traded against the stair step of the market. Okay, so they're always traded against the step. So one thing we will do when we get into the live charts tonight is I'll show you how to mark the step as we've done in some previous webinars. That being said, reversal trades are best traded off pivots because the pivots are going to be recognized by all traders globally. Now, that being said, with a little bit of experience, guys, like we did this afternoon, we took a number of reversals off Fibonacci's as well. The reason we use Fibonacci's is if they're very, very well known in the market, and I can give you those Fibonacci levels, if they're very well known in the market, they basically act as pivots anyway. All right? So I'll talk about the evil twins when we get into the, the webinar a little bit later on, but the evil twins resulted in multiple reversal trades today, and they were really quite good fun. Now guys, point number two there, the key to reversal success is to allow the market to confirm they are reversing before you jump into the market, All right? So, and I wanna create a really, really key differentiation here, guys and girls, we are not swing traders. So swing traders will generally wait for the market to try and swing in one direction. They basically hope they've picked the bottom of the market and they can swing it back the other way or vice versa, as we are not swing traders. So we are very, very mechanical, deliberate and, and everything we do is calculated what does that mean is if you're brand new to trading or kind of don't know what i'm doing when it comes to reversal trading like the market will always confirm the signal for you so you don't have to kind of guess is the market stopping here yes or no the market will show you it stopped and then you jump in so guys as as, as a futures trader as as a reversal trader and, and i love reversals first signal i was ever taught please understand that we're not swing traders okay very very big difference between swing trading and reversal trading identifying reversal traders guys are very very deliberate and calculating so they're very very good at what they do whereas swing traders generally you go for the massive swing in the market you just hope you get it right well to me guys and girls if you don't mind there's no room in trading for hope you know we want to be mechanical and mathematical with everything we do now, ultimately, guys, if you want to let the market tell you when to trade, the best way to do that is wait for the candle to close and then decide for yourselves what the market is likely to do. The market will tell you it's about to reverse if you're using the right pivot indicator and you're using the right principles under the candlestick analysis banner. And we did candlestick analysis in the previous webinar. So I can, I can give you some tips and tricks on that tonight. The third little point there is this reversal potential applies equally to the five minute chart as it does to the larger charts, guys like the four hour charts for other trading disciplines. So guys, as we discussed last week, for all reversal trades, we let the market gift us the signal and then we take advantage of it. Mentioning four hour charts, guys, and daily charts and weekly charts and similar things. As I've currently, or literally over the last sort of 18 or so months, I've been developing this reversal trade strategy we're doing tonight on the five minute chart. I've been applying that to daily and weekly cryptocurrency charts 
just to confirm that it's going very, very well, as in I can tell you wholeheartedly it is going very, very well. Okay, so my point being is that everything I'm going to be doing tonight, as, as much as I'm using a five minute futures chart, you can use a four hour CFD chart, you can use a Forex chart, a stock chart, a crypto chart, as effectively at the end of the day, pivots and candlestick analysis run right across the financial markets. So what I'm talking to you tonight applies to effectively every trading discipline, which kind of gives us guys about 400 million opportunities a day, which, which is kind of brilliant. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use an expression many, many times tonight, guys, let the market do the heavy lifting. Now that's out of the slightly more advanced webinars, which are coming in a couple of weeks. But what we're doing is we're basically saying to the market, you do this, I do that which is you provide me with a valid signal and you provide me with, for example, a reversal signal off a known pivot or a known Fibonacci. And only once you've proven the signals about the trigger, am I gonna then put my order on? Right? So as futures traders, again, we're very mechanical. I was very deliberate about everything we do. Everything is mathematics. In saying that it's very, very simple mathematics, guys. It's called basic ratios. Is one candle bigger than the other? And you might giggle at that right now, but I'll show you how accurate this is. And it's, it's kind of phenomenal. Now, guys, I want to build, if I can, I want to build on what we've covered over the last three weeks. Okay, now for those of you that are brand new to the webinar series, the ABC pattern, the ABC pattern is ultimately the foundation of everything that we do. Okay, now in saying that, the green, the little green line is owned by the buyers, the red one is owned by the sellers, and the green one's owned by the buyers. So this is what we refer to I was also, can, I, can I say we refer to? This is what I refer to throughout all of the educational courses guys, that I've written as basically a standard ABC pattern. Okay, so you can see there's a little stair step in the market on the way up. We refer to that as a buyer stair step because the buyers are in control of the market. As we've also got the opposite pattern. We've also got the opposite pattern, which I'll build for you called a seller stair step. So I'll build the seller stair step in a second. I want to highlight for those people that haven't been in the webinar before, as I build a little bit of detail on there before, you've got the A leg, which is owned by the buyers, the B leg owned by the sellers, then you've got the C leg that's owned by the buyers. Now note the little, the little B leg there. When the sellers push the market down, guys, they've literally got to the point where the sellers have failed to push the market down. Now in the game of trading, the only reason why the sellers have failed to push the market down is because the buyers were too strong. Now that beautiful relationship of buyers versus sellers, we can basically apply to every single reversal signal that we took on the NASDAQ tonight live in the, in the live trading room. Now, the flip side of that guys, the flip side of that, the market normally moves in three phases. Okay, so literally last week when we we're talking about the rule of three, what we actually end up with is this beautiful little situation where you get these three beautiful buying stair steps in the market. Now, ironically, we had exactly that yesterday on the NASDAQ. I'll go and have a look at the NASDAQ from today, guys. I think it's been all about two steps today, but we'll, let's, go, let's go and have a look. Very, very simple, similar principle applies, guys. At the bottom of that little red leg, it basically means that the sellers have failed again. Now, the only reason that the sellers fail is because the buyers are simply too strong. But we're going to get to a point, guys, we're going to get to a point where the buyers start to run out of steam. Now, the beauty of that, the beauty of that is we get all the way up to the top of the jar, this is where we are likely to pick up really, really good reversals, right? So we pick up a good reversal after you've got an ABC pattern or after you've got what we could refer to today as an ABCDE. So once you've got those beautiful three phases of movement in the market, that's typically where you pick up the best reversals. So guys, as I put in the text over there on the right-hand side, as detailed in our third webinar in this series, the best reversal trades occur at the top of buyer step two, guys, or the top of buyer step three. Guys, and I've tried to label those in yellow there to make them really, really obvious. Now, as, as I build this slide for you, what normally happens in the market, particularly for those people that weren't at last week's webinar, is we end up with three steps or what we call three steps and a stumble. Now, what it ultimately means, three steps and a stumble was something that I was taught, guys, at, towards the end of 2007. The interesting thing about three steps in a stumble is the market normally moves in three phases and then it stops. Then it turns around and it moves back the other way in three phases and it stops. The reason why this is so prolific, particularly in the futures markets, is because all professional futures traders 
around the world are expecting the market to do exactly that. So if everybody's expecting the market to move in three phases, it generally does. Now, to give you an idea of how the power of self-fulfilling prophecies runs right throughout the market, why does the market turn at a pivot and then bounce and go back the other way? Um, for example, for example, I'll bring up a live chart. Okay, here's our NASDAQ chart from today. Let me just go full screen. I then I'll show you what I mean. What's actually occurred today, what's actually occurred today is the NASDAQ shortly before the European Open shot down and failed at that pivot there, yesterday's high perfectly. It turned around and reversed all the way back up. Then it came back down, failed at a pivot, turned around and ran the other way. Ran up to the top, failed at a key Fibonacci, ran back down, came back down, failed at a pivot, went back up. Literally, it's just gone down, up, down, up, down. Now, all of those are reversal trades. All of them are reversal trades. So if you were literally sitting at your computer goes today, you could have literally picked up, well, we'll, we'll talk about it in detail. We're going to the charts. But you could have probably done guys, at least four or 500 US dollars per contract traded today with no issue at all, no, no issue at all. Interesting point, and then the point I want to raise is that the NASDAQ has come down and failed at a pivot. Then it's gone back up. I'm oh, sorry, then it's gone and failed at a pivot. Then it's gone back up and failed at Fibonacci. Then it's come back down and failed at a pivot. Why is the NASDAQ doing this? Okay, now the reason it's doing that is because everybody around the world who is using the correct, there's probably a good learning point here. If you are using the correct pivot indicator, then the market is constantly reversing off those pivots. If you're not using the right pivot indicator, you could be trying to reverse out the middle of absolutely nowhere. So awesome little learning point there. Guys, again, for everybody, just make sure your pivot file is ultimately correct. So what we find guys in the game of trading, buyers versus sellers, is we always end up with these self-fulfilling prophecies. Like if the market can't sell down through a pivot, it's gonna bounce back and, and we're gonna go and pull the live charts apart very, very soon. What typically occurs, guys, in the game of trading is we end up with this incredible thing called three steps in a stumble. Now, guys, if the market is really congested like it was today, you may end up with two steps and a stumble. All right. So again, in 2007, late 2007, when I was learning how to trade, it was all about three steps in a stumble. Yesterday on the NASDAQ, stunning three steps in a stumble. But you may end up with two steps in a stumble. All right? So just watch out for that. If the market is ultimately failing at a known area like a pivot and that's at the end of two steps, that's where the market is probably going to fail. But we'll show you when we get into the live charts. So what the stumble is, what the stumble looks like, let me build this for you. A stumble looks like that. So you've got these beautiful legs in the market and everything's working beautifully. And then effectively what happens at the top here in that little rectangle is this. Once the buyers start to stumble, I'm going to read off the text, guys, so I make sure the learning is absolutely spot on. Once the buyers start to stumble, the sellers notice. So how do you also notice this? Well, you notice it because the buyers are failing to make and hold higher highs. So the buyers may spike up, but then they get forced back down again. Okay, what does that mean? If the buyers are pushing up and they're being pushed back down again really, really hard, it means the sellers are coming into the market in force. I was understanding that trading is a game of buyers versus sellers and the stronger team has to win. If the buyers are pushing up and the sellers keep slamming them, it means that the sellers are getting ready to sell the market and we need to do exactly the same thing. So note that the sellers are likely to target these buyer owned stair step points simply to get even with the buyers. Now, as well, what does that mean? You note that all the way up there, you've got the ABC, you've got this beautiful stair step in the market. What the sellers are likely to do once they tip the market called the tipping point principle, once they tip the market and start to fall and everybody starts jumping in and going, oh my gosh, it's a selling, you know, it's a selling frenzy. What you're going to find is the sellers are going to target, as the sellers are going to target those two levels there. Now, the reason being, and I don't want to be rude, but this is buyers versus sellers. The stronger team has to win. The sellers were denied the freedom to push the market down there. So the buyers are very proud of what they did. What does it mean? If once the sellers take control, they're going to try and embarrass the buyers. It's literally like two little four-year-olds having an argument. Once the sellers can get even with the buyers, they're going to, and this is how they do it. Both they just literally tank the market through all of those spots. Now, interesting point, okay, the buyers do exactly the same as well. 
And so it's all about, it's all about either two steps in a stumble, primarily and under normal marking conditions, it'll be three steps in a stumble. You'll be able to pick the reversal point because in the case of the buyers, they're no longer impressing you. So they're no longer giving these big, beautiful buying candles breaking into new territory. They're pushing the market up and they're literally pushing, they're literally getting pushed back down by the sellers. Now, as, as a five minute chart trader, so I use a five minute chart on all of the indexes that I trade. So indexes, as I'm currently trading uh, crypto, uh, I'm, I'm actually adapting my futures trading strategy to crypto. That's going very, very well. As in the past, I've traded um, all of the major currency pairs. Uh, I've traded gold, I've traded oil, I, and also primarily now trade stock indexes. So I trade the NASDAQ and the FTAX and the S&P 500. As this rule, this rule of three applies to all of those markets equally. It's almost as if somebody's grabbed this psychological template and go and place it on the other markets, which is great, guys, because it means we can literally roll across different trading disciplines, whatever we feel like trading on the day normally performs quite well. If you want to be really, really, really good, guys, if you want to be really good at trading, please just focus on one thing though. Right, so I focus on the European Open. Right? So I've been running European Open live trading rooms now, um, literally live every day for, for more than eight years. That European Open is very predictable. It is very easy to make money in the European Open, provided you understand these basic principles. Now, I'm going to move, I have to move through my slides, guys, otherwise, we'll run out of time. Now, the same, the same principles ultimately apply, guys, to the sellers. Okay, now ultimately the reversal phenomenon in the market, in effect today, we picked up, the, the first trade we picked up was an absolutely stunning reversal trade long. So what we've got here, guys, the, the, the same scenario, you've got this beautiful ABC, guys, on the way down here, we would say that ABC is owned by the, the, the sellers. Now, every time the buyers are pushed back up, which is the top of the B leg there and the top of the D leg there, the buyers have ultimately failed. Why have they failed at that exact point? Because the sellers are too strong. Now, guys, we could argue for hours and hours and hours. Oh, lucky they failed at a 50 Fibonacci or a this or a that or a this or a that. It doesn't matter why they failed. The reason, the reason doesn't actually matter why they failed. What matters is that they did fail. What also matters is that everybody else around the world can see that. What also matters really, 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 really importantly is if the buyers are failing, everyone's going to join the sellers. Then the buyers push in and going to fail, everyone's going to rejoin the sellers again. So just like on the way down, guys, just like on the way down, um, well, just like on the way up, I should say, on the way down, we normally get three steps and a stumble. Now, this is your little failure point, guys, or your congestion zone down the bottom of the chart. Understanding this to be the case, once the sellers start to stumble, the buyers will notice. How do you also notice? So people go, well, Lockie, how do I pick the reversal point in the market? Now we have indicators to tell us when the market is reversing. Sure, can you do it without indicators? Of course you can. All you're looking for is the sellers failing to make and hold lower lows. So they might spike the market down, but then they get pushed back up again. Then they spike it down, then they get pushed back up again. Now guys, in, in, in my language, guys, in the Doro day trading language, we look for candles that are failing to close outside the range of the previous candle, right? So if the sellers are selling the market down, you're going to be getting these big sort of red bounding candles. They're closing outside the range of the previous candle. The moment the market starts to slow down, you're going to pick it really quickly, particularly if those candles fail to close outside the range, which I'll show you in the live chart. Now, just like guys, just like, again, the little four-year-olds that are fighting with each other, the moment that the sellers start to run out of steam, the buyers are going to target those two points here. The buyers are literally going to turn the market and slam it back the other way. They do, basically, they're just trying to get even with all the sellers that have pushed the market down. Now, the beauty of that is the beauty of that is once the sellers start to stumble, if you are selling the market you want to dump them and get ready to buy and the beauty of that if you pick up the right congestion zone in the market there that little rectangle if you pick up the right congestion zone you're going to end up with a a, a trade that produces a very very large potential profit with a very very small risk you're also going to pick a trade as if you have picked the reversal point in the market that trade's going to travel on for maybe 15 to 30 minutes in your favor and you get an opportunity to reduce your risk to basically zero and just let your profit run with a little bit of experience, which is kind of good fun. Now, when we first start reversing, understanding we've just gone from three basic webinars to our first intermediate webinar, 
is when you first start reversing, please just go for a fixed target, maybe a $100 target or a $150 target. The, the, and, that, and that target, as I know someone's going to ask you the question, Lockie, how do we know what target to go for? The target will always be defined by the volatility of the market. Okay, always has, always will. So the market goes today is really, really, really quiet. Okay, let now mind you, a little bit of a cheat here. Can everybody see in the top left hand corner? We've got a little indicator here, which is what we call our TGT. Okay, not to get army on you. Okay, but that's a target indicator. At the moment, the target indicator is saying go for a maximum of 18. So don't go for any more than that. Now, you can see the candles are really, really, really small. Okay, so really, really small. Let me show you. Okay, that's really, really small. If we were to scroll back, guys, if we were to scroll back to the US close from last night, which was absolutely incredible, incredible. Guys, look at the size of the candles. Look at the size of these candles over here. This is the US trading from last night. The candles are absolutely amazing. The moment, look at the European market here. Look at the difference in the size of the candles. Now, even though even though the market wasn't very volatile today, we still got an opportunity to make some really, really good money. Okay, so that, that I suppose that raises a great question. If you get really good at the European Open, which is what we're going to be talking about, you don't need to get good at any other session. However, you can apply the principles that I'm teaching you guys to the European Open, to the US Open, to the US free market, to the US close, and also to the Singapore Open. You can apply to all of those if you want. I would suggest as if you first start trading, get really, really good at the European Open, and then you can slowly start to move towards the US pre-market and the US Open, obviously, depending on what time slot you're, uh, what time slot you're in. Now, let me move that away. Guys. Let me move that away for the moment. I just wanted to show you that the volatility of the market defines your target. Guys, if in doubt, when you start trading, you can literally just go for a $100 target. All right, lucky I want to make $100 on the way up and $100 on the way down, $100 on the way up. You can carve a pretty cool little career guys, out of trading if you're just using a 20, what we call a 20 tick target on the NASDAQ, which is a hundred US dollar target. Now, as what I want to do, um, ultimately, we'll talk about why this is important. Then we're going to jump into the charts. Our time is looking really good. So guys, if you can read the step count in the market, so if you can read you know, those two steps or that three steps, and ultimately what you get to do is take advantage of it. And ultimately, what does that look like? You're hunting some very high probability trades. So please understand, guys, all great reversal trades are taken against the stair step of the market once the buyers or the sellers have proven they have failed to control the market. Understanding that what we do, guys, buyers versus sellers, the stronger team has to win. Now you can measure the reversal, or sorry, you can measure the power of the reversal um, formula by measuring the market's response to your signal set. Now this is really important and also very hard to show you unless there's a live chart up. So just remember guys, just remember, I'll remind you when we get into the charts. If you ever wanted to go and write your own reversal formula or you ever wanted to go and write your own signal set, what you would do is you would write your little algorithm and say, look, I think the market's gonna do this. And then you can actually go and look at the chart and see if the market responded to your signal. Okay, so I'm just gonna plant that seed. Now, mind you, I wrote my own, oh, so, so that, that's probably a great question. Why did I write my own trading course? Oh, so why did I launch that? So in 2007, I was actually taught how to trade a tick chart. All right, very, very different to a five minute chart. The problem with tick charts guys, is some traders got great signals other traders got no signals we were using very very complicated indicators it was almost like a, a bollinger band derivative we all, all this i mean there are all these really really fancy names and i said to my trading coach i said how are people ever going to make any sense of this there's all these variables and all this complication um and he actually said like ironically um i'm moving to a five minute chart this is richard malcolm I'm moving to a five minute chart because I don't want complexity. I don't want confusion. I don't want variation. I don't want opinion. I just want a candle to close. And then we're going to talk about that close. So guys, I transitioned to a five minute chart uh, literally early 2000 and uh, early 2009, I transitioned to a five minute chart. Guys, it's been phenomenal ever since. Now, what, what does it ultimately mean? What does it ultimately mean? Once you have transitioned to a five minute chart, guys, it basically leads to a series of four di different reversal signals that can trigger in sequence. 
So what it ultimately means is if you get the first reversal signal, you'll typically end up with the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one. And that's generally how the market moves. And it's been moving like that since 2008. So I don't think that's probably going to change. So what we want to do, guys, what we want to do, it means that we can actually anticipate when the market is likely to reverse. We can then also anticipate how far that reversal is likely to go. So we can use the volatility of the market when you first start trading to work out how far it's going to go. But ultimately, with a little bit of training, as we're doing later in the series, you can use Fibonacci in order to predict where the market is likely to push to. So what it means, because not only is the volatility of the market mathematical, but Fibonacci is also mathematical, those, those predictions can become very, very accurate. Now, what it means is you can reverse the, the NASDAQ very accurately by effectively knowing exactly where to put your stop loss, exactly where to put your target. And you also know how far the market is likely to run in your favor before it stalls. So you can actually, as you can actually become very, very, very successful as a trader. Now, as I've used this, I've used this chart image in all of our in all of our webinars so far. Okay, now I, I want to say this is from Tuesday, the 30th of, uh, of April. Now, the reason I'm using it is I just want to familiarize for those people that have haven't been to one of these webinars before, what are these different lines and different things going on in the chart? All right? So when I bring up the live chart, okay, it's going to be in context. So that little colored band right, that is running through the chart is actually a Doro trend indicator. So for the new traders, when it's red, we want to be joining the trend or reversing the step. When it's green, we want to be joining the trend or reversing the step. So basically for junior traders, when it's red, we want to be selling the market until they run out of steam. Then we want to buy it. When it's green, we want to be buying the market until they run out of steam. And then we want to sell it. Okay, now um, we have got a little bit of a cheat, guys, a little bit of a cheat going on, which we did use today, which was kind of good fun. Um, we've got what we refer to as an extreme or excess volume indicator. I do like extreme volume, um, kind of just goes with my personality. That being said, extreme volume, what does it ultimately mean? As it means the sellers are using too much volume and the market is likely to reverse. So please note on this chart example, as on this chart example, and ironically on this live chart, okay, let's have a look. Okay, so this one's from the 30th of April. This is from today. We've got this big orange high volume candle. What did the market do? It reversed. We've got an orange high volume candle. What did the market do? It reversed. Okay, we've got a high volume green candle hiding just there as well. Okay, we've got a high volume green candle. What did the market ultimately do? It reversed. Up the top here, we've got a high volume green candle. What did the market do? Reverse. You're probably looking at that going, hang on a second, Lockie. Is there an indicator that tells us the market's about to reverse? Yes, there is. It's called an extreme volume indicator. Now, you're probably going, but, 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 but hold on, slow down. My mum used to say that to me all the time. Slow down, Tiger. How do you know this, Lockie? How do you know this? Well, we know this because in the game of futures trading, it's buyers versus sellers and the stronger team has to win. Now, in this case here, the orange candle tells us the sellers are winning, but they're using way too much fuel to do it. And now everyone around the world that's well trained can see that. So all we do is we just wait for the sellers to fail and join the other team. As it turns out on this screenshot, we got the opportunity to do that twice. On the live chart today, depending on how you trade extreme volume, you had the opportunity to do it four times and every single trade went to target. Buyers versus sellers and the stronger team has to win. Okay, which I, which I kind, of, kind of think is quite exciting actually. Now, as, uh, again, we've got pivot files. Guys, we've got pivot files. So we actually, again, guys, our pivot files that we use are straight out of the banking sector in Australia. They're very, very accurate and they work very well. These are the, basically the solid lines across the chart, which won't move. I'll show you the pivots when we get into the live charts. Now, for those that don't know trading charts yet, guys, over there on the right-hand side, you've got the price of the market. Uh, and uh, there's no volatility indicator on this one, guys, because I cut the screenshot down. So what I'm going to do, guys, is take you to the live charts, take you to the live charts. I'll show you a couple of more little indicators. There's a couple more little indicators, but ultimately, um, and hey, presto, there's a reversal signal occurring right as we come into the live market. Fancy that. Okay, so a couple of things that I didn't cover, guys, on, on that chart. Uh, or I should say guys and girls. Guys and girls. Okay, over here, 
Oh, top left-hand corner, that's your volatility indicator. Okay, so that's the one that actually tells us what target we should be using when we're trading. Down the bottom, as you see, these little colored spikes. Those little colored spikes are volume. Okay, so literally volume in the market. So what I want to do is I'm going to take you through the first trade we called in the live trading room today. I'll take you through the first trade. I'll take you through the, the fourth trade because they're really obvious. And then we're going to break down what the market's doing right now. And hey, presto. <laughs> I, I, guys, I, I laugh, I laugh because I actually find, I, I don't want to be rude, but I find this really quite funny. I find this funny. Now, what did we say, guys? We said three steps and a what? Now, in the slides, we had that, you know, there we did that thing slide up, okay? So three steps, and I wonder who's going to be the first in the world to tell me what the answer is. Three steps and a, who can tell me what happens next? Stumble. Wow, Suzanne. I was about to say, it's going to be Suzanne on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Lou, you were very quick. You're very quick. Uh, Stumble, Dave, well done. All right, so guys, I'm just checking you're awake. Just checking you're awake. Have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. So, all right, so when I mark the stair step, right, for those that have never marked stair step before, if you haven't been to the previous webinars, we go from the extreme high down to the extreme low, okay? We then go back to the extreme high like this, then we go down to the extreme low, then we go back to the extreme high, then we go back to the extreme low. Okay, now, can everybody see, I mean, that's a live NASDAQ chart, kind of good fun. Can everybody see exactly what the chart's doing right now? So you've got these three beautiful stair steps to the downside, three beautiful stair steps. Now, interesting thing about the stair steps, we got a beautiful, really, really big red candle here saying the sellers are completely in control of the market absolutely brilliant like wow this is incredible however can everybody see they're trading straight into a pivot all right can everybody see this pivot across the chart here that one right there just so happens it just so happens to be the same pivot that they failed at there and we took advantage of that in the live trading room also the same pivot they took they, they failed at here and the same pivot they failed at here. So what's happening? Well, every time the sellers try and sell through a pivot and fail, the buyers see the failure and jump on them. What does that mean? The market goes back the other way. So back to what we were talking about, guys, back to what we we're talking about. You've got these three phases of movement, guys. We call that three steps and a stumble. And what I want to point out to everybody is have a look at how big this little red candle is. This one right here, I'll put an arrow on it so it's really obvious. Have a look at that candle and then compare that candle to the candle before. What does that ultimately tell you? So this I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to label this candle, guys, otherwise it's gonna drive us absolutely crazy. All right. So that little that candle there, that big red candle, we're gonna call that candle number one. Guys, the tiny little candle. Okay, we're gonna call that candle number two. Okay, so we're going to call that net counter number two. Now, again, for those of you that have been to the past webinars, you're probably going to start to see a pattern here, which is really, really obvious. For those that haven't been to the webinars, have a look at the size of candle number one and have a look at the size of candle number two. Would you say that candle number two is smaller than candle number one? You're probably looking at it going, well, Lockie, that's pretty obvious. It's, it's much, much, much smaller. Awesome. What does that mean? So guys, if you're looking at candle number two, oh, in fact, great lesson for those people that haven't been to the previous webinars. Exactly right, Dan, we call it an SBR, spot on the mark. But guys, the lesson for those people that haven't been to the previous webinars is when we're talking about the power of a candle, we talk about the colored part of the candle only. So, and it's actually referred to as a candle body, okay, candle body. So let me ask you a better question. Is the body of candle number two significantly smaller than the body of candle number one? So candle number one, it only works with three steps. Ah, that's a John, it can work with as many steps as you want to, man. John, that, that, but John, that's a really, really good question. John, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's a great question. It's a great question because you know, when we go through really, really basic training, we talk about three steps and a stumble. Okay, now we're into the intermediate level of training. So now I'm telling you there's three steps in a stumble or there may be two steps in a stumble. 
So you do have to be a little bit flexible, guys, with the market. But ultimately, the one thing you're not flexible about, guys, is the size of the candles. So as I, let me get rid of that arrow there. Everybody agrees, guys, that the body of candle two is significantly smaller than the body of candle one. What this confirms for us is that the sellers have lost control of the market. Full stop, lost control. That's it, it's gone. How do we know the buyers have taken control? Now, can everybody see this little green candle? This little green candle here is twice the size of the little red one. Now, I'm gonna call that candle three. Okay, I'm gonna call that candle number three. Okay, now, uh, there's candle number three. So you're probably looking at this going, well, Lockie, candle number three, that's the little green one, is twice the size of candle number two. Absolutely. Now, guys, in principle, in mathematical principle, that tells us the buyers are taking control of the market. Okay, that's what it's telling us. The flip side, there is an indicator underneath this candle. Okay, there's an indicator underneath the candle. Let me just draw my little circle. Guys, the indicator, that little arrow there with the one underneath it, tells us that that is a, what we call a one strength candle. What does that mean? For everybody that's trained correctly, that is their permission to buy the market. Okay, so you see this little one down here. It's basically saying, now is time to buy the market, please. So again, guys, as we were talking about before, if you are brand new to trading, where do you buy the market? As you buy the market, literally by sitting an order on the top of the candle, just here. Okay, that's where you buy the market. As a slightly more experienced trader, you're gonna be buying the market further down this candle, but that takes a little bit more training. So guys, tonight, literally webinar number one for the intermediate traders, we're gonna be buying the candle just above that candle there because we were told to. Why? The indicator's got a little green arrow saying, buy the market now, please. Right. Now, interesting point. If you wanted to make $100, if you wanted to make $100 on that trade, we need the market to move that far. Okay, so let me just roll this down. Okay, let's have a look. We haven't quite gone to $100. We've actually, ironically, we've gone to $95 out of a $100 target. It brings up a really awesome point, guys, if I can. Have a look at the volatility indicator. Okay, the volatility indicator at the moment says go for a target of 17 ticks. Go for a target of 17. Our box we drew is 20. Oh, hang on a second, Lockie. So the box we just drew on, guys, that's a 20 tick box, but the indicator said please go for 17. Now, if we went for 17, we would have been paid. If we went for 20, it's gone, all, it's gone 19 ticks towards a 20 tick target, then gone all the way back to where we got in again. So hence my point earlier, is if you have a volatility indicator, you can use a volatility indicator to actually choose your targets. What I would personally do, guys, with a volatility that low, is I wouldn't go for a $100 target, which is that square there. You can go for a $50 target, and you can go for that over and over and over again if you want to. What does that mean? It means you would have got into this reversal right where the black line is, and you would have been out of the reversal in under one candle, and each of these candles is five minutes long. Now, the beauty, guys, the beauty of that, dare I say it, um, for those of you that have traded with me in the live trading room, the sellers have literally just come back down again, and what have they done? They've reloaded the same reversal again. So you can go long on that one, or you can go long, and you've been paid. So, okay, click, bang, boom, I've been paid. The sellers have then beautifully, they've come back down and gone back below your entry point again, which means if you wanted to, guys, you could simply go long again on exactly the same trade. What's occurred? You'd be paying $50, then you wait, and then you've been paid $50. And you can, if you want, just keep repeating the same reversal. But we're going to keep tonight really, really simple. So, Quick summary, guys, of what's gone on over there before we go to the earlier trade. If you compare candle number two to candle number one, you know the market, or the sellers, I should say, the sellers are losing control of the market. If you compare candle number three to candle number two, you know the buyers have just taken control of the market. And off, off we roll. So Daniel, great question. 
Where do you set your stop loss? So your stop loss will always be defined where the enemy fails. Okay, so if you're buying the market, and if you're buying the market, your sell would be underneath candle number two. And that raises a great question, Daniel. Could we go for a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio trade? Of course you could. How you would do that, Daniel, is literally this. You would grab your, you would grab your box, move it down there and say, Lockie, there is my risk. So with a little bit of experience, that is going to be my reward. As it turns out, you've picked up a one-to-one -one risk to reward, a one-to-one -one risk to reward trade, no trouble at all. So Daniel, when you first when you first start trading, when you first start trading, I'd be looking for a fixed target, just $50, $50, $50, just keep going. With a little bit of experience, you start going for a one-to-one -one risk to reward. Now, for those people that don't know what that is, if we've got $75 at risk on a trade, we go for $75. Now, interesting point though, guys, interesting point. Daniel, can I can I share something with you? If you were going to, if you were going to take this trade, um, you wouldn't believe what's just occurred. My webinar has just been bombed by a two-year-old. <laughs> would, you, would you guys like to meet my daughter who just happens to have come into our webinar? Just hold on one sec. Yes. Now this. Here she is here. All right, there's my princess. Do you want to say hello to everybody around the world? You don't you don't want to say hello? You haven't got a choice now. You're gonna say hello? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so guys, I do apologize to everybody saying hello. Look, everyone's saying hello, Ivy. This is my princess. Right, she's two and a half. Um, mum's just realized she's in here, so mum's coming to rescue. So hold on one sec if I can. Yeah. So guys, I do apologize. I think that's the third international, uh, what would you call that? An international, um, in the first time that you go on live internationally, what's a debut? <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's Ivy's, that's, uh, that's Ivy's third international debut in probably the last week and a half. So she's actually realized when I'm in here with the door, there's actually a sign outside my office saying I'm on the air. So literally an on air sign. It's on, but she realizes as soon as mum jumps into the shower, oh, I can go and get a cuddle from daddy. Doesn't matter if the sign's on, right? So that was Ivy. She's my princess. Um, just hilarious. And I've got two, two, uh, two other little boys. Guys, Luca is 10, Tyler is eight, and Ivy's two. Just, it does keep it real, Ali. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, where were we? Risk to reward ratio. Risk to reward ratio. So, Daniel, it's a really, really great question. Um, the beauty of the beauty of it, uh, fifty dollars target is your example. I would need to stop. Um, yeah, now interesting point, but that's, it, it brings up a really really good question. If you had a stop loss, so if you had a stop loss around about seventeen, now the market was telling you at the time target seventeen. What you can literally do, I mean, what you can literally do is this: you can basically play a game with the market where you can say. My risk needs to be behind this candle when I first start. So behind candle number two. Mind you, candle number three, just here, the buyers are stronger. So you can sit your stop loss behind that, which means you're carrying even less risk. The moment this candle starts to move through your entry point, picks up your trade and starts to move to profit, you can actually use an automated trade management or an ATM on the trade to the point at which you could say, the moment these guys get anywhere near my target, let's say they're 80% of the way to my target, I'm going to bring my stop loss into say minus four. Okay, so your stop loss would come in and sit just here. What it ultimately means, what it ultimately would put it down and put it there. So what it ultimately means is you can actually engineer your risk to reward while you're in the trade to the point at which you say, all right, Lockie, I'm going for a 17 tick target, but what's going to happen is my stop loss will automatically move to minus four the moment it gets anywhere near my profit target. So what did it mean? You end up with a trade that's around about four times in your favor risk to reward. Um, that's, that's, that's how we do it on every single trade. Now in saying that, uh, or stop, yeah, Mark, you can move your stop loss to plus four if you want, which means you can't lose any money on the trade at all. Just be aware that some days you're gonna get a series of plus fours. Mind you, that's a series of winning trades, sure. But what we want to try and do is, is we want to use the magic again from last week's webinar, the rule of three. As in the rule of three basically states as a five minute chart trader, 
If you get into a valid reversal trade, you want to give it up to 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes to maximize its profit. Okay, as it turns out, if you if you took that trade and waited 15 minutes, as it's gone to its profit target and everybody's happy. Uh, <laughs> Mark, you're absolutely on the money. Now guys, Ivy's come in to say hello, obviously, so it slowed me down a little bit. Let me take you through one of the trades we called in the live trading room. Guys, today uh, we got four up to five really good trades. They all went to profit target. The really, really simple one, the really simple one guys, is this one here. Okay, that one there. And obviously this one here. And we also had a pre-market. We had a pre-market signal as well. So how would you have dealt with these trades? Unless how would you have dealt with these trades? It all comes down to stair step. Okay, it all comes down to stair step. So I'll do a, I'll do a slightly more advanced trade, guys, which is the first one. Then I'll do a really, really simple one. And then our time will be up. So what we did, guys, what we did today is as we came into the open of the European market, which for me, guys, I'm Tokyo time was four o'clock in the afternoon, Tokyo time. What happened is we waited for the sellers. So you note here, I've got two beautiful selling legs. So sell leg one, sell leg two. We waited for the sellers to push down through double brick walls. They couldn't go down. So we bought the market going the other way. Now, great question, guys. Great question about risk to reward. Daniel, what we did is we entered just over the top of the pivot, going back the other way. So our risk was around about 16 ticks and our target was 30, even for the more, even for the junior traders. So our risk to reward was around about double uh, in our favor, which was kind of good fun. Okay, now that trade, guys, a number of people got picked up above these pivots. In fact, the vast majority of the traders in the live trading room picked up this trade. Because the volatility was a little bit higher than it is now, most of the traders either went for a $50 target or a $100 target. The more senior traders went for a $150 target. This is, guys, that little box is a $100 target. And effectively, it basically picked us up and in around about two and a half minutes, went straight through our $100 target and everybody was happy. Now, it did go further, guys, it did go further. And one of our traders did stay long eyes until up here and ended up picking up around about 52 ticks okay 52 ticks which is two and a half times our daily kpi right so well done to that particular trader uh now interesting point as we picked up a series of reversals coming back the other way they're quite technical so we'll leave them alone for the day i do want to shout out to daniel guys daniel picked up this reversal okay which was absolutely incredible that's the reversal we talked about in the live trading room basically sold the market down guys went for a 200 us dollar target which looks like this uh and daniel might be in the webinar with us tonight guys but that is a 200 us dollar target right there uh what reversal did he use guys he used this one over here okay now you're probably going well lucky what are you reversing off over there that's like kind of out in the middle of nowhere guys you know how the the nasdaq market loves fibonacci loves fibonacci so we have something called the evil twins. Okay, all we're going to do is draw our Fibonacci down in order to catch them on the way back up. And what we were reversing off, guys, these two red ones right here, they're referred to as the evil twins. So Daniel's trade, guys, was actually a Fibonacci-based reversal that paid more than two hundred US dollars in under ten minutes. So big well done to Daniel. Guys, big well done to Daniel. Getting back to the flavor of the webinar, guys, because we are an intermediate webinar tonight. What's occurred is we had the market sell down. Okay, let me get rid, let me get rid of a couple of things on the screen here. That one, uh, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so absolutely beautiful reversal by Daniel, guys, in the LTR again today. This orange candle here, guys, means the sellers are running out of steam. So if you're a static trader, guys, if you're a static trader, you simply waited for the buyers to show some strength in the market, which is that little green candle. And you could very, very easily buy above the top of that candle and simply send it all the way back the other way. Okay, now this one, that's because it's in the second hour of European trading, moves significantly slower than the first hour. Okay, however, it went to profit perfectly. A key lesson, guys, a key lesson out of today would be this. You've got this huge red candle, which means the sellers are in command of the market. This orange candle here basically says the sellers have lost control of the market. This little candle here says the buyers are about to take control, please jump on it. 
this little candle here says, you see this little one underneath the candle, that little candle there says, find any excuse you can to buy the market because it's about to go nuts. Can everybody see the little one and the arrow under the candle? So if we wanted to buy that, guys, we would literally just put our order above the top of the candle and let the buyers come in and take control of the market. And it's gone beautifully again. Guys, here's your 100 US dollar target just there. And you've gone through your 100 US dollar target guys, once again in under one candle or under five minutes. So guys, we are literally on the hour. What I would love to know on the hour plus a little bit of loose change. I do apologize. The little IV intervention guys took us a little bit. Can I ask everybody, guys, from those that are in the webinar tonight, what's the number one lesson you can take away from the webinar tonight? As, as it, basically, as a debrief, guys, every single time we got a reversal signal on the NASDAQ today that meets the conditions of what you've been taught, it went through a profit target. Now, as a result, now for those people that haven't been in these webinars before, the reversal technique that I'm talking about, guys, runs at over a 92% strike rate. So 92% success rate. So when people say, I'm concerned about the risk to reward ratio, I say, I'm not concerned about the risk to reward because we get it right more than 92% of the time. So it gets to the point, guys and girls, with the losing trades actually don't matter. Mark, you're saying three steps and a stumble. And how are you? I hope you're amazing. Three steps and a stumble. Ironically, guys, what have we ended up with here? Okay, we've ended up with exactly three steps and a stumble. And... As I will ask, in fact, my last little gem of information, guys, last little gem of information. What is the man, the magic, the magic Fibonacci extension number for the NASDAQ? Guys, I gave that to you and uh, well done. <laughs> well done. Guys, let's have a look. We know the NASDAQ loves to fail at the 133 extension. Let's have a look. Okay, so there is the sell down. There is the buyback. Let's have a look if it got to the 133 extension today. It didn't get to the 133 extension. All right now, what did it get caught at? Well, so there's a good little lesson. The NASDAQ normally goes to the 133 extension, but what did they run into? Pivots. Now that raises a great lesson, guys. All professional traders around the world can see the pivots. Not everybody can see Fibonacci extensions. So what's kind of more powerful? That's kind of more powerful. The pivot will be more powerful, but either way, if you follow this principle, guys, this literally one, two, three candle principle down here, you've picked up a beautiful reversal trade that's gone straight through its target inside its time expectation. And even if they didn't get to their Fibonacci extension, they're still reversed perfectly. So, so I, thought, I hope I hope that you've got a lot of value out of tonight. Guys. I hope you got some really, really valuable lessons. Uh, again, in the live trading room, guys, we ran at four trades on the NASDAQ today, uh, four trades for wins. I had one trade on the FTAX today that went straight through its profit target. So five trades today, as we did get one on the S&P 500. So six trades today, six wins, another day in the live trading room at 100% strike rate. So as again, if you're interested in the live trading room, please reach out to Doro. I hope you guys got lots of information out of the webinar today. Uh, guys, and next week, guys, next week, we're going into the next stage of reversal trading as we're going to be talking about trend change trading. And these webinars are going to run in perfect sequence for nine webinars. And I do hope I do a really good job for all nine webinars. So guys, have a great night. Wherever you are in the world, if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, uh, I'll see you out in the live trading room. Uh, and that runs over the European Open. And it's, uh, guys, it's going really, really well. <laughs> so have a great night, guys. Wherever you are in the world, uh, I'm going to go and give Ivy a quick cuddle. She's clearly chasing me. And guys, I'll see you next week uh, in uh, part five of the webinar series where we talk about trend change. All right, have a great night. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye-bye. Thank you, bye. everyone. Bye, Lucky. <laughs>